Yeah, I think you probably uh, are going to see the top of my head. And uh, no, if you see the hat, it's not because I'm trying to hide my bald head. I think you've seen my bald head enough times. I just bought a new hat and um, I'm just kind of stretching it out and um, wanted to see how it feels. And it's quite nice. Um, I wonder if I should go on the, uh, yeah, let's go pop on over here. I have, even though I haven't been doing the movement the, uh, that way much. So I finished doing the, uh, I don't know if you can see this. This is, I was going to be for you guys, but um, I don't have, like I said, again, I don't have the tripod, so I don't even know if you're going to be able to see whatever. And um, so you can see what the colors are. So here's the first core, um, second core, third core and fourth core, and then uh, first core, uh, first army direct. I didn't put any guys on here. I just finished moving the first core over. Gosh, I wish I had some more guys. I think I was being a little... Oh, and then I have uh, the two cavalry. I, I left them unattached. Um, I think I'm doing okay. I, I really would love to. I mean, you know, it's obviously fantasy land. I would love to have this by the end of November. But it's just... I don't have... There's just no troops. There's just, there's nothing I can do. So I was like, well, you know what? We're I'm going to try to, as best I can... Um, uh, bring my troops uh, towards defensible terrain and all these guys are all those um, uh, Opo Chini or, um, uh, well the people's militia brigades I can't I can't attack with them they're only for defense purposes so there's uh, no point of uh, so I just thought you know okay I'll try to do the best I can and yet again maybe kind of also I'm trying to I wish I had some I would I mean yet again fantasy island land I would love to try to do some kind of like a little faint at attack. I want to like try to draw draw attention away from the longer I can keep these guys here, of course. I mean, you know, come January, it's going to be near impossible for, uh, I'm hoping, for the Ger Germans to knock them out of the way. But historically, holy cow, eh? Like it was just, I've been watching within five months, they just went berserk with the uh, uh, Gerlitza uh, Tarnif uh, breakthrough. It's just, I was like, whoa. Uh, just amazing to think that even like, um, is it Kovno? Oh my God. Yeah. I think we were talking about that in the live stream that Ludendorff by, like, think about that, man. It just freaks me out to think like by, mm, well, this time 1915 and you know, they were setting up shop, like their headquarters there in Kovno. I mean, that's quite a distance. Anyways, they're nowhere near there. That's for sure. Um, I mean, well, it's only November 1914 for crying out loud. Um, so that's the best I can do. I'm just trying to do the best I can. If I have some, well, I did actually rail, uh, the first, um, uh, core. Oops, sorry, commander, who, who is he? Let's see if I can snag him. Alexander, uh, Doshkevich. I don't know if you can see him. I don't know what you can see, but, um, uh, that's what he is. So yeah, I railed them over here to us. Wait, sure. Oswayos. I have to go and look um, look up these things. I shouldn't be trying to even try to pronounce when I can't even do it. So, you know what I mean? It even makes it worse, I guess, kind of thing. So I'm just doing the best I can. If I can get some troops over there at some point, I would be, it would be great. Uh, this is just going to be, yet again, shifting um, things around. Just trying to make sure that it's going to be as difficult as humanly possible for... Um, uh, the Germans to push them out of the way. <sighs> okay, I do know that if the Germans attack them from here, uh, these guys only have clear terrain. So yet again, I'm always trying to like, at the. I just have to do it that way. I've got to uh, do the best I can. If I don't have the best uh, uh, defensible terrain, then at least uh, put as many people as I can there. To make it as difficult as possible to uh, push uh, push me away. That's what I'm trying to do. Here, oh jeepers jumping. I am going to, uh, this is the tricky one. I Originally it was like, okay, I'm going to like uh, fall back behind uh, like north of the, the Nyman here. Or the, uh, I think Nyman, Nyman, Nyman. Uh, Ny uh, look, yet again, here I am trying to do something. But it's this hex here. That, that's driving me nuts, and I know the Germans are going to be able to uh, wiggle around here. Because uh, uh, I'm allowed, because they did it originally. Let's go with it. Um, so I have to figure out what I'm going to have to do here. If I if I withdraw now, that just allows the Germans to get there anyway. So do I sacrifice troops in a bizarre way, 
knowing that they're going to force me to retreat. I will lose troops, but stall for time to bring some more troops in. Or do I move them back now? Uh, shoot. And in a weird way, also force them yet again to, you know, spread uh, spread their supply points and troops around. But I, I, I don't think the Russians know how bad it's going to be uh, troops wise. Uh, if they could uh, see what's behind door number two right now, they'd be like, oh my God, a lot of trouble. Uh, that's it. I think that's my main uh, thing right now. It's like I said, just going to be a little bit of shifting and then it's going to be um, uh, unleashing of the November uh, massive attack. And it doesn't mean I have, it was already uh, anticipating a little bit uh, with the, um, excuse me, with the, um, Oh yeah, I do want to see what the fourth uh, corps commander who has to deal with all kinds of horrible. You should see what the second corps commander. It's the only picture I can find of him, Sergei Shademan. Shademan, you should see his freaking beard. It's bizarre. I was like, what the hell? It almost looks like it's been photoshopped. It's weird, but it. That's supposedly that's what he looked like at one point in life. Um, and the third uh, corps commander is Nikolai Epanchin. I don't know if these are the real guys, but I think it is. But. Um, like they were also historically, they haven't been fired yet from, from me. And then the fourth core guy up there, um, Eris Khan Sultan Giri Aliyev, or I guess just Eris Aliyev. I don't, like I said, I don't know what you're seeing. So there you go. Um, I'm going to try to figure out what to do there. Um, I just, uh, like I said, as the Russians, I'm just uh, really would like to stay as long as possible in East Prussia and just go from there. Um, and my head is already off into Wonderland thinking about, um, uh, you know, I also have to remember um, about, you know, hindsight and all that stuff. They don't know about yet again. Um, I think a lot of times, okay, we have to start hunkering down for trench warfare and so on and so forth. I'm already thinking about like what... Um, the central, like Germany is anticipating and this is going to help me I think uh, grand strategy wise later on about trying to figure out okay where are you going to put the resources because I want to role play for goodness sakes and I think the Germans are looking the way things are going that they could probably win the war by the end of 1915 I think that's the way they're starting to structure um, their uh, long term planning I guess is the way I'm looking at it. And it's starting, <clears throat> excuse me, I think if I look at it that way, if they, like the higher ops can say, you know what, we think we can pull this off. We could actually win the war. Uh, or uh, In my version of win the war, which is uh, means is um, get uh, France to um, capitulate. Basically, they're just going to say, okay, you know, we give up and uh, you, you you get uh, big chunks of our land, uh, even more so than you did in the Franco-Prussian kind of thing. Um, and, you know, I'm obviously going to look at what, yet again, with that Martin Gilbert um, uh, uh, book, which is uh, the, um, uh, what is it, the uh, Atlas of uh, World War One or whatever, um, which is uh, the old one there. It's really good. Uh, the one I was doing for a bunch of live streams. Uh, that has a, a thing about uh, what the Central Powers were planning on doing, you know, having these little areas like, okay, this is a proxy country and so on and so forth and whatever, you know, under German control. and so, Oh, my God. Anyways, you get the idea. Uh, so I'll use that, but I think that's a good one so far. But, um, oh, gosh. Yeah. And then on the other side bit is also with um, uh, – England, uh, Great Britain, I'm, you know, I still, it, I'm just starting to slowly, it's, it's been nagging on me as uh, so like, remember France, man, they're the ones getting it. Uh, I think this, it started to really hit home when I watched that BBC thing uh, a little while ago there of um, um, uh, the last three days or whatever. Uh, signing of the armistice. And um, I was just absolutely flabbergasted. It was an amazing uh quick little uh you know under an hour show gosh man, I should watch that again uh mind you i'm in the middle of watching 1917 because i'm on holiday now and it's really weird to be watching these like uh extended chunks of movies it's pretty neat um yeah, i'm enjoying it i've got to uh, uh i'm loving the hyper uh they seem to be putting a lot of detail like of uh 
you know, clutter or and, uh, debris, I should actually say. And you'll, you'll find out later. Um, a lot of debris in, in the movie. And I'm like, okay, that this is nice. Um, and I have to remember, it's Hollywood for crying out loud. Um, but uh, this is the bizarre uh, thing I did find out. I just thought, what the hell? Kind of uh, a strange thing. Um, Sepoy... I can't remember what uh, the character's name is, but uh, I just I just stopped it now, and I had to go do some fun stuff. Um, I was thinking it was just interesting. There, there, one of the guys he got picked up uh, by a truckload of people, and they're they're going in his way, and um, one of them says, "Oh my God, you know who the hell would shoot cows? You know, you know, because you know, the Germans had shot everything, killed everything." And uh, I just thought it was weird because I don't uh, connect eating beef with Sikhs and the Sikh, the Sepoy um, uh, soldier sitting in the truck goes, well, they're pretty smart. You know, if they had left them alive, we'd eat them. And I was like, what the hell? I just, I was just, I mean, of all the characters you could have picked, I was like, what in the world? That just seems, uh, you know, just a bit, uh, I, well, for me anyways, I just thought it was interesting. Um, so that's it. I'm going to try to figure out uh, to pop on them over there. Like I said, uh, then I'm flipping on uh, yet again, with the grand strategy thing with, Br uh, Great Britain. Um, they are, like I said, I've been very, and I'm going to continue on with that up as long as I'm still trying to keep with, uh, the historical plausibility is, you know, up to a point for crying out loud. Um, I am making them hyper aggressive. I want them to be, um, uh, looking at their naval stick going, yeah, well, we've got the biggest one uh, in the room, so screw you. Uh, they have the true swagger stick is what I'm trying to say. Uh, sorry, I'm being whatever. Um, and they're going to use it, and they're thinking super long term, and they don't want to lose what they uh, they're used to having. They're used to having everything their way. Uh, the money throw, uh, flows th through them like all the commerce, the trade, everything. Like they are in control of everything and they don't want the, the upstarts, these Americans over there uh, to start thinking that they can, uh, uh, getting, um, uh, getting ideas is basically what I'm saying, that type of stuff. And um, yeah, so they want to, you know, worry about the, uh, the Persian oil and so on and so forth. They don't want to get stuck in Europe. Uh, they don't like being told by the French what to do, even though the French are saying, for Christ's sakes, man, it's our territory. It's getting nailed here, so on and so forth. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. Let's see how it goes. And then this whole, uh, you know, uh, the Albanian thing. and the <laughs> Okay, that's it. Uh, I'll go and stop this. And um... Oh, and the only other thing I will say, I watched some other stuff, and it's part partially good with, uh, I call it... Uh, Know, some kind of equation of trying to figure out uh, still it's been several days now I have I keep saying to myself why have you not looked it up it's like one of these primary things uh, to look up is the definition of hell and I want to look up to find out because um, uh, hell I mean let's be honest it's been used so many times to uh, you know as a metaphor or a reference for World War one the Great War um, and I want to find out other definitions that are away from some religious thing or whatever. And it's also going to help me with, um, part, I've got part of the equation down. Uh, I've got two of them, two of them. One of, the, one of them is um, to observe, to be dispassionate. The second bit is not today. You don't mourn now, you will mourn. There's another time to mourn uh, and so on and so forth. Trust me, I, like it, this is for me. Um, and the third thing uh, for part of the equation, like there's other things I still haven't, you know, clicked into uh, a bit. It, but that is, um, I need to, um, yeah, because there's sometimes, like, you know, when I get into or watching shows, or like I said before, I, I, I love listening to actual veterans talking about the war. Uh, and, um, you know, there, or I watch stuff or I see suffering and so on and so forth. And it starts getting, uh, it just rips me apart psychically, um, like really badly. Um, so, uh, you know, I have to, f uh, you know, um, also it's helping me historically trying to figure out how people had to deal with, uh, just on the micro level, but I mean, on this level of, I mean, they damn well knew what the hell was going on. Lots of them, and they weren't cold hearted bastards. I mean, 
uh, th look, there was cold-hearted bastards, I'm sure, at every scale. Cold-hearted bastards that love sticking it to the soldier, you know, and, and would almost practically wipe the, uh, you know, the bayonet off, uh, bloody bayonet off with their tongue kind of thing because they enjoyed it. And then there was other sons of bitches that just love seeing thousands of people getting slaughtered. I would say those are the exceptions. Like, they are extremely rare. I hope to God, uh, is what I'm saying. I think the, the rest of uh, the time is people were, uh, uh, what I'm trying to figure out is uh, how to get through it. <clears throat> Excuse me, that's it. Um, quite quite simply. Um, yeah. Um, oh, and the other thing, I'm, uh, what I was saying about the hyper detail about that movie, 1917. Woo, woo, woo. The road sucked behind. Oh, do they ever suck? And I was like, yes. Th like, that's what I mean. The, that hyper detail is like, I really need to see that stuff for the logistics for me to get my head into it, man. Uh, I'm really super duper ultra happy about that. That was nice. Um, yep. Like I said, I'll just move some uh, uh, thingamabobs uh, over there. And then um, we are getting... I don't, yeah, <laughs> if you think there's going to be any Russian attacks, you're out of your flipping head. Um, there's no way that's happening. Um, we're just falling back, um, trying to draw, hopefully the Germans, uh, like spread them out yeah, a little bit, even though I, I did extend a little area here. And yeah, of course I do. Uh, you know, there's little shiny baubles off to the side. I keep thinking, oh, there's an opportunistic whatever. So I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, 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 that's what I did want to talk about. This, um, I think they're called ecotones. Oh my God, it's been ages, man. Um, there are certain air oh, has been, yeah, like I said, it's been ages since like late eighties, uh, early nineties. I was in the uni universe, yeah, university. And, um, there's certain areas. Okay. Let's take, for example, uh, you've got a forest, then you got a field. And in that in between area, it's, you've got a uh, flora and fauna that are, you find in the field and you find in the forest, but you wouldn't find, um, let's say, you know, there's a transition to go back and forth. However, there's that, uh, in that transition area, there are flora and fauna you will not find in either of them. It's like totally cool. And in a weird way, I'm starting to uh, uh, wonder if this game, Der Veltrieg, is kind of like that weird, like I've said often, and it's not me, uh, I probably stole it from somebody else when it, that BGG uh, thing that brought me to a blog thing about a, a re amazing review about the grant campaign. And starting to think of, uh, I think the person was saying, like, doesn't know what it wants to be. Um, and I'm wondering sometimes, because it's got that feel, sometimes I get into this uh, micro, looking at the little, uh, you know, uh, I just... I'll tell you one thing, man. I would love to play Der Weltkrieg. Um, I know it sounds crazy, but I would love to play this at uh, one hex per um, 10 kilometers. Like right now it's at uh, 20. I'd love to try it at one hex per um, 10 kilometers. Obviously, you know, you'd have to adjust little here's, there's, and everywhere's. But, uh, ooh, that would be interesting. I know there's a lot, so I mean, upstairs I've got a few like... Um, uh, World Undone 1914, that type of stuff. Um, one hex equals uh, eight kilometers, if you believe. Ooh, I think so. Gosh, I hope I didn't get that screwed up. I think so. Um, so, yeah, but it, it uses a different, you know, whatever. But I like this. You know, I want to get, uh, I'll figure out something. Well, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm doing my own thing. All right, that's it. Uh, off I go. I'll stop this and uh, what the hell? Yeah, I'm on holiday, so who cares? Um, yeah, I'll go and watch some more movie. All right, see ya. Hope you're having fun. Bye.